Hello, welcome everybody. Welcome to the winter edition of Chai Chai's Exclusive Tea Club, where um, I'm just going to explain for those of you who, who, who don't know, every three months we send a selection of uh, amazing teas that, that are suitable for the season or especially um, desirable in that season. And, uh, and if, you, if you are interested, you know, you can sign up on our webpage or contact me and I can give you more info. But it's that every three months we, we have a fine selection of teas according to the season and so if you're here for the winter well uh, we've chosen uh, a bunch of teas that are, that are I, I think winter is really the season where you want to be indoors uh, more and you want to uh, it's the perfect opportunity to enjoy teas that that have a longer sessions um, uh, red teas and uh, uh, hong cha hei cha uh, the oolong teas that are more roasted. These are things maybe that are more uh, in tune with the season. So for starters, the first tea that uh, we'll talk about, and it's the one I'm actually brewing right now, is this. It's a, it's a, a shopur tea. It's called chahuashi, which means uh, stone flowers. So they're, they're, these are, these are kind of like rocks, like pebbles. They're, they're, they're hard and um, this is a, a new product it's it's very similar to a very old uh, product which is chateau um, and chateau uh, are, are the, the the lumps that form at the bottom of the fermentation pile when you make pour and so this is just a, a modern tweaking of that processing uh, so while while the the pour tea uh, is fermenting uh, they're, they're mixing the, the pile and the juices are dripping and the pectin, the sweet pectin from the buds is, is, is becoming syrupy and dripping and uh, clumps form. But from those clumps, they've um, done some kind of cutting and screening process, which is, is quite vague. I, I haven't been able to see the process myself to explain it better, but um, it is a special process that compacts it further. And uh, so this tea, you really can't brew any other way, or you, I don't recommend you brew it any other way than to boil it. Um, kind of like, like, like Chateau in that sense too. I mean, you can take Chateau and, and brew it in, in, in a pot or in your Shiboridashi, but it won't release uh, very much because it's so compact. So you really wanna uh, boil it. So I've been boiling uh, the tea here in this wonderful teapot. Uh, I love this teapot. It's um, from Petr Novak. He's, um, he's a dear friend that makes uh, amazing teaware. But this, this uh, is one of his uh, relatively newer uh, type of uh, pieces. And it's great because it functions as a, as a, as a teapot, uh, but it also functions as a kettle for boiling. And, and boiled tea in the winter, if you probably have not had boiled tea before, uh, it's 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 less common um and and boiled tea just really warms your soul and 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 i really recommend it so um so basically this this is a, a teapot that uh that i can put on the flame and it has a, a strainer here so i can filter it but the leaves are just inside and i just boiled it for a few minutes and that's really it but if you don't have a teapot like that, it's okay. You can use it. Um, you can do it on a on a stove, uh, in a pot, and, and and that's that. Or if you have a glass kettle, a glass kettle. Um, this is this is a teapot slash kettle that I only use for for boiling uh, tea. Um, and and that's it. And then you well, first of all, let's, I'll take advantage to pour it so maybe you can see the color, uh, how thick and. really really lovely um, so so I, I'm, I'm you just boil it boil it boil it and and that is that is it the only thing that you we can add to that is that um, every few uh, boilings it uh, you'll find it's uh, marvelous to add just a little bit of uh, pink Himalaya salt um, just like a, a little a little pinch you know just a little a little pinch you put in there and you and you reboil it um, 
these these uh, these stone flowers as they're called can also be used uh, like to to add to another tea that you're boiling so let's say you've had a shopur session and um, you you want to take those leaves that are not quite spent and and continue using them by boiling which is another way we boil tea we, we you can also sp like spice that up by adding some uh, chato or in this case the chakwashi the, the stone flowers so they can be used as like a, as an ingredient they don't it doesn't this tea doesn't have to be enjoyed exclusively on its own uh, it can be oh, just one element more in a boiling pot of uh, what, what you can do with liu bao you boil liu bao boil in general you we boil hei cha we, we boil liu bao uh, and, and, and and the other fermented teas pour in any other fermented teas Mm. So you'll find that this tea has a, a taste of uh, Chinese dates, um, jujube. It's a, it's it's very much so, and it handles many 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 steepings. It's so hard that um, it just reveals its its little by little, very little by little. I don't know how many steepings you can do, but you can be there all day with this tea, and it'll become um, sweeter uh, throughout. The day and uh, and actually move really towards the licorice. This is actually the the first uh, steeping. And I had it there a long time as I was setting up, actually, just sitting, and um, and then I reheated it. Now, you'll you'll find that boiled tea also has a boiled flavor, which um, it's it's a new flavor. Uh, once you've discovered it, you'll 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 find that this re repeats itself. Um, in the tea like you can recognize a boiled tea um, rather than a steeping something happens there in the in the the alchemy of, of boiling well that's the the first tea I want to explain the second one is a real treasure also So this is, a, believe it or not, this is a, a Tikuan Ying. It's a wild Tikuan Ying um, from Fujian, from um, the, the Tolo uh, villages. I don't really know if it's how to pronounce it. It looks like something like Tolo. There's these uh, villages that are protected by UNESCO in Fujian that uh, date back to the 12th century. Um, I recommend that you, you, you look it up online, the, the circular um, villages, um, sometimes square shaped, they kind of look futuristic, um, you know, these communities, and it's interesting. So outside of these uh, villages, uh, some Tikuan Ying grows wild, and, um, and it's interesting to say this is Tikuan Ying when you look at it because you you we are always uh, accustomed to, see, to seeing Tikuan Ying as bald oolong uh, as rolled but um, here are these these wild leaves they did not roll them in boils it's hand processed it's uh, for me really a, a true gem to to discover this tea and I uh, have just a small limited quantity that I share with you um, it's fantastic it's uh, uh, hand-picked, hand uh, hand-rolled, and then uh, just lightly roasted. It has a really warm nuttiness about it that's um, very comforting. And I just can't highlight how special uh, this tea is. You know, normally at Chai Chai, we don't offer Tikuan Ying from China. We only offer Tikuan Ying from Taiwan because uh, it's organic. What, what I get from Taiwan and what's I could possibly get from China normally is not organic and it's um well when I went to Anxi where Tikuan Ying is from uh it was really uh, sad to see what what most Tikuan Ying uh comes from or looks like these these mountains that are just peeled uh mono uh mono mono uh, monoculture uh, just tea, tea trees, and the mountains uh, are, are bare, 
uh, only with, with tea trees, and that's not to me. That's not how I want where I want my tea to come from. I want my tea to be organic, but I also want my tea to come from uh, an environment where uh, it was growing in a in a natural environment with other plants and, and nature, and not just a. So Ti Kuan Ying uh, from uh, from Anchi is so famous. It's such a huge production that's needed, uh, that um, I'm I'm not I'm not attracted to it. Although I have to say, on that trip that I that I went there, I went there with Global Tea Hut, and um, we were really blessed to see some um, uh, wild tea trees, um, and and discovered that that there is wild Ti Kuan Ying that is uh, amazing in Anchi. This is not from Anchi, it's from um, about uh, 50 kilometers from, from Anchi. And um, it's, it's, it's amazing, it's, it's really, really amazing. So enjoy, enjoy that tea. Find this um, so, so syrupy, so so delicious. Okay, so the third tea I want to present to you. No, I'll just pick this up. As you can see, this comes from a brick, and it's a uh, shang pur, a raw pur. So uh, pur can be either fermented or uh, right uh, cook. What's called cooked pur. Or it can be uh, a cook pour, which is called shell pour, or it can be uh, uh, what's considered raw pour or green green pour, uh, unfermented, and that's the kind of pour that uh, ferments slowly over over time. Um, really, the fermented uh, pour that we we find commonly that's that's quite a new thing, dating back um, just to the really to the seventies. In a mass-produced way, to, since the '70s, so we're talking about roughly 50 years, and, uh, and for centuries and centuries, uh, they were making uh, shangpur. Uh, so this this tea comes from uh, 2004, which is a great year for me because that's the year that we uh, we opened up Chai Chai, so um, it's uh, it's a very special year for me. But it's funny this this tea is not a tea that I have uh, a whole lot of information about. Uh, the wrapper says that it comes from uh, old, uh, from wild trees. It says that it comes from wild trees. It doesn't say it comes from old trees. It says it comes from wild trees. But um, you really can't believe what wrappers say. Normally, I, I wouldn't buy a tea based on what the wrapper says. Uh, in this case, it was recommended to me by uh, a dear tea friend who's, um, who I really respect their, their, their judgment. And they just told me, try it, try it. It's, this tea is it's for real. It's, it's great. Heat this up a little bit. Rest up. So it comes in, um, in these bamboo, bamboos like this, and the brick itself is just it's, it's simple. There's no there's no more more information on it except to say that it comes from uh, wild trees and. This tea was stored in, in Malaysia for 17 years, and it's really aged, really aged nicely. It's exactly the type of Sheng Pur that I love. Um, yeah, it's not very, very old, right? It's just uh, 20, almost 20 years. But that's, that's, that's already something. It's already something, and you really do notice the aging in this tea already, that that's something. So um, it's very woody. And, 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 and camphor, there's a lot of camphor in it and tobacco, but it's wonderfully sweet, uh, especially as you brew it more and more. It, it, the, 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 it's, it's thick and just lingers on, on, on your throat. It's a, it's, a, it's a marvelous tea. It's everything I want in, a, in an aged shang uh, of its type, yeah? Something between uh, 15, 20, 25 years. Uh, this is uh, lovely. And I'm really, really happy to have found it and to, to share it with all of you. This is 
the fourth tee. So you might be able to tell it's a Hong Cha. It's a Jiang Hong. Jiang Hong just means Hong Cha from Yunnan. Uh, Hong Cha is uh, uh, literally it means red tea. Uh, it's what uh, in the in the West we've been uh, calling black tea. So it's kind of confusing for for people getting into tea. What's black tea? What's red tea? It's um, if you're talking about Chinese tea, it's probably better to use the, the Chinese words Hong Cha and Hei Cha. Hei Cha for the fermented Hong Cha for the for the uh, highly oxidized teas, which is what red tea is and what's called black tea in, in the West. But see, black tea is called, uh, in, in China, black tea is the word that's used for the fermented tea. So that's why it's, it's important to, to know the, the proper words. And, and I think it's, it's, it's um, good and respectful to use the, the, the proper words. Um, yeah, so, so this Jiang Hong is fantastic. It's a, it's a great tea that you can do leaves in a bowl. If you've never done leaves in a bowl before, it's your first time, you just grab, you know, uh, a small, can I see, how can I tilt this without tipping it over? Yeah, just a few leaves, right? Just a, just a few leaves. And you just put the, the boiling water, so leaves in a bowl, is a great uh, method. It's not really a method of brewing tea, but if you call it a method, it, it's the method of the non-method. It's uh, no analysis. It's not kung fu. It's not. Uh, there's nothing tricky about it, and it, it's really just a meditative way to to brew tea. Um, very zen. You just add the water. You need a nice big leaf. is a is a good tea for that. That's why I recommend this tea as a as a nice bowl tea. I think it's important to drink bold tea and not just uh, be uh, uh, preoccupied uh, with brewing uh, parameters and, and making the best tea possible Kung Fu style. But uh, some bold tea um, will, will encourage equanimity. We'll, we'll, you'll be practicing equanimity. And, and just um, it's, it's like the, the counterpoint to the analytical mind. You'll just add the water and just sit and, and enjoy connecting to yourself, to your breathing, to this moment, to your relaxation, and not think about uh, anything else, no, no brewing time. So you, all you need for this is a, is a tea that has nice big leaves, and, and that's fantastic. So this is a, a fantastic tea for, for bowl tea. But it's a, it's a wild tea also. It's from the Menghai uh, area. In Menghai area, you have, are probably um, more, more uh, acquainted with for for Shopur. um and uh, and what I love about this tea so I mean I love wild tea as you probably as I've said before and you can understand why I, I hope uh, I love wild tea but what's what's really fantastic about this tea is the the texture in, in, in mouth it is so silky it's it's um it's a 10 out of 10 in silkiness. It's as silky as it gets. And, and it just, uh, it's so smooth. It just glides down your throat. And that's surprising. As, as many teas as you've had, whether you're a beginner or whether you've um, been drinking tea for a long, long time, you will be able to uh, notice this and, and, and be pleasantly surprised by this, this wonderful mouthfeel. Just now, see, look at that. You can see now how, how thick that is just for, for, for waiting longer. Actually, I'm gonna add some more water here and keep brewing because I'm going to continue talking, doing another video in Spanish for the Spanish speakers. But I'd like to keep brewing this tea. As I said, the Cha Hua Shi just uh, handles so many steepings. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to that. So, so those were the four teas that we, we did in the, 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 we have two, two selections uh, available. There's the, the, the regular selection and then a, there's a bonus selection for, for those people who want some more tea, there's two options. Um, and, and the people who, who choose the, the higher uh, option have more of the same teas and always a bonus tea. And um, where are you, bonus tea, here you are bonus tea. I wish 
this was a microscopic lens. Uh, I don't know how much will be captured on this, but I'm going to try to show you. If you can see here, the little small yellow flowers, golden flowers, golden flowers. So this is a um, this is a two thousand and one Liu Bao uh, with golden flowers. Golden flowers can be inoculated, uh, like in in in, in Fuzhou brick tea. It's uh, it's common that they inoculate it, and or they can also develop naturally. Um, this does not look at all inoculated to me. It's uh, when it's inoculated, I've seen just you know, covered in, in the golden flowers. This looks like just the natural occurrence of golden flowers. And um, so Liu Bao, for, well, first of all, if you, if you don't know Liu Bao, Liu Bao is, uh, it, it means eight castles, literally. It's, it's fermented tea from Wangqi. It's, it was the inspiration uh, for, for, for show pour processing as they developed it later. They looked to how they fermented tea Liu, in uh, Liu Bao tea, and then they adapted uh, procedure to make uh, to make shopware so it, it was the inspiration um, and they, they learned a lot by, by watching uh, how, how they did uh, Liu Bao fermentation but uh, it's different Liu Bao is different from shopware it's a uh, it's a uh, roasted it's pine roasted it's uh, it's not uh, wet piled in the same way um, it's, it's, it's a different tea and it's more it's more woody but uh, this one, yeah, it's 20 years old already. It's more than 20 years old. It's from 2001. And uh, so this, this golden flowers is it's a probiotic. Uh, it's very good for our body. Uh, how good is it? Well, you can look it online, um, Jinhua, or the, 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 the name, uh, the Latin name now is Eurotium uh, Cristatum. You put golden flowers, tea, you'll get images. So when you're boiling, you really have to be on top of this. Well, now it's really just bubbling, 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 bubbling. But when it overboils, just add a little bit, just add just a tiny bit of water. Boiling tea is a little bit tricky. You have to be on top of it. This is always a bit risky to be boiling and talking at the same time because it just starts to foam up and, and, and come out. But um, we have one ear on the on the fire, and we can just always just cut the the boiling with just a little bit of uh, water. It does it can, in this case the water is hot, but it's it's just not boiling, and that already will bring down the foam. That's a little trick that uh, I wasn't planning on showing you or needing to show you, but there's that. So um, so yeah, in Hunan the Hunan Fu brick uh, is 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 typically uh, with golden flowers and inoculated, and um, and the Chinese believe uh, for a very long time that this is very good for uh, a long list of things. Um, at the very least, it's a probiotic. At the very most, you'll live forever. <laughs> I mean, look it up online, uh, see, see what you think. Um, as far as the tea goes in itself, it's a great tea. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fantastic tea uh, without, the, without the golden flowers, I, I don't say that I, I have yet um, had enough different golden flower teas to, 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 to find the flavor of the golden flowers. I don't know if it can be found. Like um, if you can taste the tea and be like, oh yeah, this one has golden flowers. I haven't been able to uh, develop that sense for the flavor of the golden flowers because I can't isolate it from the flavor of the different teas I've had with golden flowers over the years. So it's not about the flavor to me, about the golden flowers. It's more, it's definitely about the, the property for me. And, um, and even that, it's 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 more of a curiosity for me still. It's not something that I've incorporated into my lifestyle of drinking often. I think it's a it's an interesting um, thing that that we can learn more about. And uh, and this is just maybe uh, your first exposure to it. Well, if you found this interesting, uh, great. I'm happy. That's that's why we're we're doing this. I love to share tea, my my tea knowledge and tea culture with you, and uh, explore teas together and send out these teas. And um, 
If you're inspired to join the tea club, fantastic. Uh, we'll send you every three months tea, descriptions on the tea, we'll hold a Zoom session, and we will also do uh, this, this video for those who missed the, the live Zoom session, uh, or for people who just wanna know more about tea. Uh, and that's it. Thank you so much for, for joining me today, and uh, I'll see you again next time.